Good morning, team. Got me Cup of Joe up the Waz, the real Waz. Sorry for you, New Zealand fans. We're going to get through that coffee. We're going to get through the scores from the Cowboys Titans game and also the Eels and the Raiders. And there were some absolutely almighty scores here from Drinkwater and Robson. And I cannot, cannot praise Robson anymore this year. He has been incredible. He's picked the right times to run. He got some cheap offloads in there, but that's going to happen when you get out of dummy half at the right time. And and last year, I do think he was a little bit too pass trigger happy. It does seem like he might have been, he's either super tired, exhausted, carrying a bit of a nickel, something at the back end of last year because, you know, start of last year, he kind of did this on and off. He'd get a 70, get a 40 odd in fantasy, but just was playing really well. He's running the footy even more now, but the momentum that this team has allows him to get out and run, get out and run a little bit. You know, maybe he gets a quick play of the ball next. It seemed like probably like six or seven times he was the one that found his front, got up, and then they fanged it out to the left and right, and he did a great job. And, and he was the play over, over Harry Grant. There was no if, buts about it. Um, and, and this 78 really just puts the stamp on that one. Got to try. I got a couple of line breaks in this one. Didn't have to tackle too much. 29 for two misses, but he got every other stat that you need in this game. Drinkwater at 81, just showing even more than what he showed last year. He's averaging 57 now for this season with three line breaks, a try assist, and two tries in this one. Kicking the footy in general play as well, the same as Ponga. So it was very, very clear that uh, <laughs> clear that the picks this year were Drinkwater, Ponga, and then Jaden Campbell, apparently. Um Probably Turbo, to be fair. He's averaging close to 50 now. But yeah, that's uh, that's those two. Incredible efforts from them. Uh, Val Holmes, a few sort of cheap errors. I, was, I captained him in Supercoach, so was riding him pretty hard. And yeah, three three errors, which could have been sort of line break assists that um, yeah, just one of them just passed a little bit late. So he still he still has the errors in him, but yeah, when he when he gets things going, he's incredible to watch. 216 run meters, still had a line break, a dry assist, a couple of line break assists there. So everything across the board, 60 for him, averaging 58. So he's gone up 105K. It's going to be even more after this week. So these three guys, the linchpins, the you know, the guys running the show here, incredible, incredible efforts from them three. Jaden Campbell, all right. Let's just have a, a little bone to pick with, with this one. So he absolutely stuffed that one up in the corner. And let it bounce, let it bounce, let it bounce. And then Nanai picks it up and he misses the tackle. Nanai goes out, obviously touches him a bit. He gets nine points for that. I think he gets 10 points for that with the tackle as well. So while that, that you know, you can make a massive stuff up like that and then get rewarded with 10 points, that's a little bit frustrating. But um, he was great. You know, for, if the Titans can score some points, Campbell's going to be a great pick. Obviously, you take away... Let's just say the two try savers. He keeps the turnover tackles. That's fine. Uh, and he's still a 50 in a team where you got beat. And all we need to do, or you need to do, is have him average like low 40s for it to be worth it. That was great. So Campbell, a really, very decent buy. A much better buy than Clint Gutherson. <laughs> okay, just little digs along the way um, without complaining too much, right? Uh, so yeah, Campbell was great. Very solid buy if you, if you need someone at that price point. And if he did it this week, 6% have him, much better than last week. 43 and a half is the average now. And that's what you bought him for, for that exact average. 10 points of value. Dave Fafita, 58. He was a little bit higher early on the game, slowed down in the back end, though, and he gave him the ball a few more times. But he's making tackles. He's making run meters, same as last year. He'll have games where he gets into the 60s, 70s, 80s. And then hopefully this is somewhere near his base with you know line breaker, line break assist in there as well. Brian Kelly got a try in there, a couple of line breaks for him, seven missed tackles, so a little bit all over the shop down that left-hand side, rocks and diamonds, as they say. Ruben caught up with 53, he had a line break in there, which is pretty cool, um, and three tackle breaks, no negatives at all. So that's a massive win for Cotter owners and uh, another price rise, which is exactly what we need from Rubes. Really not too much else to say on Ruben. I think we're holding for a while now. One of our better scorers in the teams, so uh, that's for sure. Won't be trading any mids for a good while after last night. Cleese Haas with 53 in his 50 minutes. So yeah, played um played lock and then you know came back on at the end and and scored that try and and did good things. That's what he does. He does seem to score pretty well. 
fantasy wise always seems to be in that sort of 40s average is anyone still holding on to him it's it's worked out fairly well Carl Felt, congratulations to him. He beat Matty Bowen's record last night with an intercept try. And uh, I'm sure he, he'll he buy AJ Brimson a beer after that uh, lovely pass straight into his lap. So, yeah, congrats to, to Carl. Uh, good run meters in this one as well, obviously, in a couple of ta- turnover tackles. So, nice score from him on that front. Chad Townsend, how good's he going? Did get sin binned and still got 47. So, averaging 48 for the year. He's had a he's had a cracking start and he's been in, in everything. He's actually running the running the footy heaps. Like there's a couple of he just took hit ups because he's like, well, we need to keep the momentum going forward, and he had no runners, so he would just do it himself. So that was very impressive. Both for more, a couple of line break assists and a try. He's a very strong body, isn't he? And he kind of he just knows where to be. Um, moved out to center for a lot of this game, and uh, it it still ended up working out well for him. That's where the the tackles were super low, but um yeah, a couple of good runs in there near the end. And uh, yeah, I think they worked out that they could finally give him some early ball. And yeah, if he can get one on one with the center, he's usually he's going to be too strong for them on on the on for most parts. Um, obviously, speed speed's still there. So yeah, good good player, Bo. Um, just working his way back into the season after his ACL. Tanner forty five. If you've held on, then you'll take that. And hopefully, them scoring twenty two points was a sign of of improvements to come. But it, um, it didn't look great at the start, let's be honest. They kind of come back, but it was super hot. And, yeah, you know, it's like when it's warm and you're playing a sport. And if you're well ahead, it's it's very hard to kind of stick at that that top tier of, of skill um, and effort, really, when it's 30, 32 degrees, which is what it was yesterday afternoon. Jamie Jolla, 41 in his 58 minutes. So a, a solid outing, big minutes without the, um, without the PBM this week that it was in previous weeks. So... That's a little bit frustrating, but um, you still take that and the minutes, you probably expect it going forward a little bit more for sure. And you saw guys like Clark get 42 minutes. It's probably what we're expecting from him without you know, Isaac Liu. So, you know, Jolof got the extra minutes um, that Isaac, I suppose, wasn't wasn't there for, to be honest. Uh, Mario Talangi, he, he's playing great as well. It's great to see as a Cowboys fan, um, all these outside backs just doing incredible things. Jordan McLean next, guys. 37 for him. Solid. Neem, he was great. I don't know. It's in the 40, the 32 degree here, I'm not sure why he had to play 45 minutes straight. He's He should just be in two stints, in my opinion. I think he should be starting with Griffin for 20, knock it out of the park, and then or 25, and then just give him that good rest and then bring him on with sort of, even if it's a stint from the 50-minute mark to the 70-minute mark, and then you know bring on, bring on Geordie or bring on someone at the back at the in, in the back end because he's absolutely great. But that effort to you know kind of bring that comeback a little bit for the Titans, he went straight off for that for Cotter. And and there was a period of time where where him and Granville had played forty odd minutes straight. Yes, over you know half, uh, the half time gap in there. But you've got these guys on the bench in McLean, um, in Cotter, and and also in Tamalolo that have been on the bench for a long time. And that's probably where. They could have changed things a little bit. It was sort of, they'd been on for almost 20 minutes straight there. So just a little interesting tidbit I thought I'd add for that one. Uh, Brimo, 36. So he um, moved to six for a lot of the game. An incredible line break try assist. That was very impressive. For those who brought Clark, there are a few people out there. Great base stats, uh, 36 and 42. If he gets 42 going forward, I think that will be solid enough to make money and, and get you about a 40 average. But worrying that it wasn't the 50 and he got moved back to the bench. It was just... Doesn't look like Dez is going to give him those minutes, but he, you know, at least he's solid. He's not missing tackles. He's not making errors, giving away penalties. So surely it's hard to to get him out of that game. Uh, Verrills, Jojo Fafita, Kula Kefu, 29 for him. 28 tackles, two misses, 53 run runways. They hate giving him the ball, that's for sure. Looks really strong when he does, but they're not giving him ball in, I suppose, dangerous territory. And it's just something to, to note, I think, is this, where where are the weapons in your side? So when I'm looking when you're looking at adding a fantasy player to your team, check where the weapons are. If, if they're outside this player, which they are in this case, anytime they had a little bit of decent ball, it was like cut out cut out cut out Finner and get it and cut out um yeah, we'll cut out him and get it to Holmes or get it to Maritalangi early and let them do their thing down that sideline because the amount of line breaks and line break assists that happened down there is incredible. So that's where the issue is 
with Kulakefu is that 53 meters is going to happen pretty regularly. It does for him anyway. He's not someone that comes in like completely looking for it like some other edges do, but the weapons are on the outside. So just think of that when, you, when you're going to select a player. Got caught out with Taylor May. Like he's a weapon, obviously, but they have so many other weapons in that team. So yeah, interesting one at that. Uh, but still 29, not the worst in the world, but he's not going to make a ton of money. Jeremiah, a big loss this one, 27 for him, low, low 32 minutes. Still looks really solid when running, which is good, but yeah, they got to get him a rest in this one. I'm fine as a Cowboys fan as long as they're winning. Um, that's good. Dearden, 25, so a bit of a low one for him as well after his heights. And then the sad one of this day was was Zach Labart with 19 minutes. He got an early try. I've got him in super coach teams and yeah, sad at that. Um, started really well, got that try and then Poor, poor fellow's done his ACL. So it does mean it's Tom Chester season, who I absolutely love, but I do love Laybutt as well. And um, just so sad to see anyone get injury, injuries. There was you know a lot of concussions this weekend, a few different injuries, but these ACLs are the yeah, the worst of the lot. So condolences out to, to Laybutt. It was a very, very tough one to see. That's for sure. Uh, the Titans also had four and go off early. So for a few of these guys still not to get massive minutes was um was frustrating. And then Harley Smith Shields, sexy Shields, as uh, Denon says, picks up a 15 in that one there. All right, let's go to Raiders and the Eels. And Matt Timikov was absolutely lightning. Wow, he's got some some serious pace on him and just the um the acceleration and the stepping is incredible. Hobgood with 62 in his 61 minutes. Like Timiko, if you're asking me if he's a buy, they have a they have one in round ten. They have one in round fourteen. So I don't know, if, and you probably already have sort of three or four raiders. I don't know if I can prescribe any more. I just offloaded one, which cooked me. But Hopgood 62, 61 minutes. He just gets through his work. Doesn't he? Two turnover tackles as well as the line break. Impressive, impressive stuff. Morgan Smithies. So he doubled up his runs basically. Got one hundred and fifty there. Got his first offload for the year, and uh, another tackle break to his name with no missed tackles. So. The injuries in this game also made him play 80. I did think he'd play about 65, 70 at least in this one. Um, but that's, yeah, Rapana going off early. They had um, Mariotta as well that I don't believe played the full amount of time there, uh, wherever he was. Oh, 73 minutes, actually. He did play a lot of it. Um, oh, and Horsburgh, sorry, it was the other one. The ab injury um, just made him play 80, and he was everywhere. He was incredible. Um, that That's a trade I'm going to regret for a while. Um there was some merit to it, but he's a, a, a de- definitely a, a learning experience. Like for me um, and for all you guys out there, that's uh, well, I've played this game for a long time and I'm still learning each and every day, um, each and every trade, each and every whatever, right? Every situation is different. And that's what makes this a challenge. What makes this fun or makes this annoying at times is every situation is different and you can't, you can't get away from it all. Um, so Smithy's this one, one of the guys in the comments was saying to, when I was talking about the trade plans, he was like, well, look, if you're 50-50 on it or, you know, in this scenario here, you could probably just save a trade. It, you know, it keeps your mid and edge like looking all right, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, there's there's heaps of reasons to hold or sell either way. Obviously having five Raiders in my team, it's like, well, he hasn't been performing well. Happy to offload him um, for a guy that's, you know, on the rise and we know the stats that we see with like Gutho in that situation. So there was lots of merit both ways, but in hindsight, I was 50-50 on bringing on Gutho. I just wasn't super excited about him the week before, as you guys told, could see in my content. Um, he then shows that he just continues to keep getting good scores when when Moses isn't there and then they get smashed in this one and he gets, he gets punished um, by that, obviously. So it was a double whammy. Smithies gets the 80, Eels get smashed. Um, but if you're 50-50 on a call, don't do it. That's that's where I, what I learned as an extra last night. I was very close to getting to that in previous year. <coughs> sorry, in previous years I would have just went for it and gone nut. Nah, he's been he's been crap. I'm getting rid of him. This year I was close. I was close to making that call. I only I only made the trade with three minutes to go, just because I wasn't sure. Do I do it? Do I not? Um, and I was like, oh, I'll bolster the wing fullback and we'll go from there because I'm going to trade a few wing fullbacks next week didn't work out um but yeah it's a lesson to everyone and myself that uh, if you are 50 50 on a call don't make the call uh savage 57 on that one there he was incredible as well so great stuff down that uh down that side the speed that he possesses possesses is incredible 
260 meters for him, amazing work. Uh, Joe Taps, 51. Anyone who brought him in, it's a, it's a really solid time to, to grab him for sure. If you don't have a lot of Raiders in your side, if you're just sitting with like Ethan Strange and yeah, maybe Fogs or, or something like that, then um, yeah, great stuff there. That That's Tarpany's a great purchase and uh, I would still consider him for sure. Obviously with their buy coming up is a slight worry, but yeah, good stuff from him. Hudson Young with the 50. He, uh, he got that try as well. And yeah, back to some better scores. I still wouldn't look to buy him as yet, but that was a good one. Dillbags Brown, 48. So yeah, it's just, he scored pretty well to be fair in a team that got smashed. Did get a line break assist, try assist. Good tackle numbers. Obviously kicking numbers there helps him out a little bit as well. But um, yeah, they, they look really poor. The Eels, unfortunately. Bit of a shocker at that one. Um, yeah, he's a hold, not a buy anymore for now. I just think you want to hold off. You're hoping for sort of 55-ish to 60 with, with Brown. I'm not sure we're going to get that regularly if the team is struggling. What about the real cash cow of the week, James Schiller? Two weeks in a row, he's gone bang and averaging 41 in that time. Uh, 48 in this one with a try, three line breaks and a try assist, 230 meters. I'm not sure if that's going to happen on a, a weekly basis, but he was incredible. And uh, yeah, definitely someone we will talk about coming into this week. But yeah, so many Raiders. Ethan Strange, 46 for him. Wow. He stepped up, hasn't he? I didn't play him in this one either. I played um, Danny Levi over him, which ended up with a 31. So lost out on 15 points. Could be worse taking the salmon loop as well. So either way, sort of about that 15, 12 to 10 to 15 points there, 12 to 15 points. But he was great. 21 tackles, one miss, seven tackle breaks and a line break. Yeah, running the footy, obviously not kicking it, but uh, apart from one forced dropout. So he was great. He's a very easy starter in your centers at the moment after last two weeks showing without getting a try that he can get 37 and 46 was incredible. All right, speaking of good holds for this week, Joey Lussick was the one um, that worked out well. So 45 for him. He made 56 tackles and got 45 points, so not great on that front. Eels are in disarray. All he had to do was tackle in this one, did pick up two penalties, and also four missed tackles with seven run meters, so and one kick at a dummy half, 32 meters for there for one point. So that wasn't great on that front. Um, just a hold for now, yeah, until something happens. <laughs> Got more issues in our squads. Bailey Simonson, Simonson, 44. He um, he was great. This is what we expect from him. I expected from him at center. And to do this in a game where they got spanked and he had no attacking stats, he's very, very good because he'll sit somewhere near that, that stage there. And if you do need another eel, then I would definitely consider him at his sort of interesting, awkward price. But again, watching the eels just then, it's not a super exciting uh, thought to have, that's for sure. Fogs, my captain. This is just a tough game. I'd, you know, Rapana trade out Smithies. Fogarty is captain. Didn't play strange. It was a comedy of uh, comedy of errors in one game, which is wild how that works. And yeah, the rank the rank suffers from it. But we'll we'll be back. We'll be back. And if you are in a similar boat to me, you'll be back as well. Hopefully, you're on the other side of it, not in my boat, and you are crushing it. And that's all we're here for. We're here to we're here to help you guys which I'm seeing a, a few people message me and going, oh, I'm really high in the ranks. Thanks to you. Can you help me <laughs> help me get that keep continue going there? So that's nice. Always nice to hear. Uh, Fogs, tackle numbers were down. Did get a field goal, which is great. Six goals in this one. Uh, a couple of forced dropouts. Kick meters were solid without being great. 11 run meters. So that went down from 30, which sucks. But um, yeah, 42 for him. Not great. Hopefully that's just his one low game and he'll be back from there. He just didn't have to do too much, did he, on the defensive side. They were marching downfield too often. They didn't have to kick as much either. So, yeah, and then no, no assist for him. So hopefully that bounces back because um, he was a good purchase last week. We don't want it to be a poor one after a couple of 40s in a row. So that's that. Uh, Salah there, we had Madison, not great, 68 minutes for him. Lower score than we would have hoped. But, um, yeah, again, this Eels team, it's tough. Uh, Seb Chris, 35. If you hold on, if you played him, you'll take the 35. You're happy with that. Sean Lane, 33. This was just a product of the game, in my opinion. After being really good last last week, he needs some circ he needs circumstances for him to be going right. And unfortunately, it wasn't the case in this one. Hopefully, it's a bounce back for, for Sean. Danny Levi, 31. Another try. He's uh, leading the try scores, I think, with four out of five games. Just very impressive. Just in the right place at the right time. 
62 minutes, still so low to get a try. Um, but again, they didn't need to tackle a hell of a lot. Simi Sasangi, two tries this for him. So congrats on that one. His first game for the Raiders, correct, I believe. Uh, just probably only had to play 30 minutes, didn't need him to come back on. Very fair. Even with the injuries, they played Smithies rather than bringing back on Papali'i. Yeah, get the young guy to, to go nuts, that's for sure. Horse, hopefully it's only a week, maybe, if that, for his uh, ab injury. And hopefully it's okay. Uh, Jordy Raps, the re miraculous recovery from this man. I thought, yeah, the game was done. I was ready to turn it off. Um, <laughs> that's for sure. A 23 for him in the end with a line break and was running fairly freely in that second half, which is wild. I, I need to find out what actually happened and we really need him to be named next week because it's up against the Titans and we just saw a drink water go bonkers uh, at fullback for, for the cows. So anything near a 50 would be great for wraps next week, but uh, we'll see what happens. I may have to trade him if there is something that's actually happened. He's not named next week. So yeah, that's that. Uh, Blaze, 21. Uh, yeah, a game where it wasn't going to fit him at all. <laughs> this is a player that you need a little bit of momentum with who's going to run the footy. He's going to get some tackle breaks, but um, in this one, 16 in negs. Yeah, 22 tackles for six misses this one. So he's working hard on the defensive side, just missed a few more, had a couple of errors. One was bad on his part. One was just a terrible pass, just kind of skidding on the ground there. Um, so that wasn't great. But um, 21... People were like, oh, he's a bust, he sucks. The team just sucked bad, man. Like, he scored more than Gutho. And, yeah, we'd say Gutho's a bust, given he's 285k more expensive. So, that's where you're at. And but with that one, oh, what happened with Penasini? Wasn't wasn't Penasini at 35 overnight? Let me know if you're a Penasini or not. I'll just have a little blow up, a little vent in the comments. Because he was, I swear he was 30 odd last night, or 30 or something. What happened there? Okay. Yeah, Gutho 20, shocker to get that try assist there and, you know, a couple of, couple of errors, a couple of missed tackles, just a shocking game overall. Um, for the squad and missing his goals badly, Sean Russell might be kicking goals next week and that'll put me in the bin. That's for sure. It's going to haunt me for a while, that trade-in, um, until he's out of my side. <laughs> uh, Russell 19, Benassini 20. That 20 is wiring. I think it was 30-odd. So that's a big change. And now 20, it's like, oh, God, in this team that sucks. He's a guy that you can look to trade, I think, because that's just shocking. Um, even, yeah, my Taylor May got a little bump to 34. So, yeah, he's a hold now after that extra two points. Um, Already had a drop ball too. Russell, not great. Trade. Yeah, not great. They're not getting it out to that right-hand side at all at the moment, which sucks. Um, yeah, and it's quickly on the uh, Supercoach side. Uh, you know, Captain Holmes in that one. I had Drinkwater as captain in the in the head-to-head um, -head squad. So that saved you know, that saved me this week. The, the drink water captain uh, had a few issues in that squad. And the second game sucked as well last night for, for Supercoach. But uh, Leibart got that try, obviously got the 47, which was nice with a bunch of good runs. Uh, Finne with 32. I don't know how much of a playable option he is on a week-to-week -week basis, but, you know, solid solid enough um, to not be like the, you know, shocking. We had Liam Henry with a minus one at that point, but um, Robson, an incredible 117. Talungi as well, 79. All those guys. And Townsend doing great things there for sure. At both for more, finally get a good score with that line break, uh, line break assist try in that one, or no, it ended up being a line. They didn't give him the line break. He clearly made the line break. Anyway, um, line break and then passed it, got the ball back for the try. Um, yeah, for feeder 81, definitely keep him in your sights over the next few weeks. Campbell, 53. Crazy that you know, usually see Supercoach points way higher, but he had the try savers and the turnover tackles to get 60. was wild in, in fantasy. So keep him on your radar. He's um, going to change price this, this next week, coming into his third. But um, that's probably all we need to know from that game. And then the frustrating one for me, not playing Strange for 96, um, playing Blaze Talungi instead. So a 66-point difference is, is tough. I definitely expect it to be a closer one. And Talangi scoring better in the two games that he played. But yeah, is what it is. Thankfully, I did <laughs> hedge myself and go, if I was trading um, Smithies, I'm, I'm playing him in in uh, in this game here for sure for my for my team. Dylan Brown updated up to 55, which was helpful. I didn't play Lustig. He got the 38. So good and bad in this game, to be honest. You know, played Smithies instead of you know, someone else that I could have reserved in a different game. Um, so that worked out on that front. But uh, yeah. Timoko, 124. Schiller, 112. He's going to change price next week as well. So he's a very easy cash grab at 230-odd uh, for sure. 
Sivo with two tries, lane 37, super frustrating, Penasini as well. I think he's a sell in Supercoach, definitely. Less of a sell in Fantasy, but still, yeah, not great. At that front, Rapana, I think he's done his job. Another 55 somehow for him in this one. With that line break, obviously, he was very helpful. He ended up with that try assist as well. So he was, when they when you're the second to last pass, a lot of time you put the guy that tips it on or whatever in in the space is when you get um, you get that assist. So yeah, he picked up the line break assist and the try assist for that one. So that's that, guys. Quick one, I got to get off to work. But uh, thanks for being here for this one. And we'll catch you in the round results review.